everyone. So hello, everybody. Welcome back to another edition of the Panel Sessions. I am your moderator and host, Jordan Julio, digital strategist here at Panos. Uh, and today I'm joined by two very great guests uh, to talk about how we can use marketing attribution to find your return on investment. Uh, joining me today is Mel Coleman, Director of Media Strategy, and Jim Panos, our very own president. Uh, but before we get into it, I'll let individual intros go. So Mel, if you want to get this off. Hi, I am, as Jordan said, Mel Coleman, Director of Strategy and Media here at Panos. Um, been here for uh, about three and a half years, and I'm a former bank marketer. Uh, so really uh, a passion of mine and what the, the media team here at Panos does is um, not only looking for the greatest and most effective advertising strategies, but also being able to measure everything that happens. So, you know, regardless of where that traffic is coming from or where it's being driven from, if that's organic, if that's paid, if that's an e-blast, et cetera, it's really making sure that you have uh, all of the tracking capabilities and that you're co co uh, collecting the correct data uh, for any kind of um, effort that you have going on. So that's a, a really, really, truly big passion of mine is uh, incorporating data into your everyday efforts. Thank you, Bill. Jim? Uh, good afternoon uh, or good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, Jim Panos, president of, uh, of Panos Marketing. I too am a former bank marketer. Uh, worked eight and a half years in banking before starting the agency. And uh, we've been going strong now for uh, nearly 28 years and uh, serving primarily community financial institutions and have been at about 98% of our business is, is that, is working with FIs. And uh, we we take it seriously. We have fun doing it. And I think we do a great job with uh, over 40 employees in the staff with uh, full service, including website development, full media services, branding, creative, uh, copywriting, et cetera. So we're very excited to be here. I think one of the key key elements of the uh, agency uh, is the uh, strategy side, which is kind of what we're talking about today. But I'm going to hand it back to Jordan so as not to get him off of schedule or off of uh, outline. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. You too, Mel, for the intro. So, you know, really get into the nitty gritty of it all. I'm curious to know all about attribution and ROI. So, Jim, you know, why should marketers even start this conversation to begin with? Why is it important? Well, I, I think in, in so many cases, marketers face a challenge on a day in, day out basis in trying to justify their existence as to why they want to have a budget that is worthwhile, where they can invest in the bank and help it garner return on that investment. But all too often, as we have found with many of our clients, and we are slowly but surely shifting the mindset to, to where um, marketing is not an expense. It's not a drag on the bottom line. If you do it properly, it's it's a, it's an investment, and it should bring more revenue to the the company or to the to the bank or credit union, and, and able enable them to really invest even more. It's it's kind of a rolling ball, as far as I'm concerned, a snowballing effect. And I I, I think that is one of the key issues that many bankers and credit union and individuals face, the marketers must somehow get themselves positioned to show that you can invest in marketing and show a return. And we're going to try to do that today and show you some examples. Right, right, right. So, you know, all in all with that, you would say that there is a really strong reason to invest in determining your ROI because that's what's going to show you retribution and tell you really what's going on behind the scene. Absolutely. It's, it's justifying your existence. Mm -hmm. It's allowing you to get more staff. It's allowing you to perhaps hire an agency or do it in-house, however you want to do it. Uh, I think the key here is that uh, you try to get a seat at the table wherever possible. And C-suite should really be uh, understanding of this. Uh, if you can bring it to their attention and talk about the fact that uh, that marketing is no longer putting just print ads out there, making sure that you have um, notepads and uh, and other you know coffee mugs waiting for everybody, and that golf tournaments are not the only way to get people interested in your business or in your commercial lending efforts. So I think there's a lot of things we can do, and a lot of things marketing people can do, and uh, and I'm sure many of the people on this call right now 
are, are succeeding at that. And I'm hoping they're nodding their heads that, yeah, we can do that. And we've done that. And this is how we've done it. And I'd love to hear your stories at some point. But right now, that to me is one of the key pieces is to en enable and connect with the C-suite to see how marketing can contribute long-term to the success of the bank, enabling you to get additional revenue to do those things and make sure that you're doing things like Mel's going to talk about that will be able to be measurable so that when you go to talk about it, you're not just saying, oh, we got all these impressions. You know, mm -hmm. we, want it, we want conversions. We want things like that. And again, I'm not going to try to pretend I know everything about that, but I know Mel doesn't have to pretend because she does know everything about it. <laughs> Precisely. Uh, so this teased me up perfectly, Mel. So, you know, I know it's a marathon. It's certainly not a spread, but when looking at ROI, uh, should I wait until a campaign is all wrapped up and finished? No, um, it's actually never too too late to start tracking. Um, if you already have a campaign running, definitely review what you've done. So, um, for for example, and I'm going to throw around some random terms. I'm sorry if you haven't heard them. I'll try to go slow. Um, but every single time that you have a landing page, you should have a dedicated landing page. Um, every time you are driving traffic to a URL, any URL, you should be adding a UTM parameter to that. In, in fact, you should be adding three. That should be source, medium, and campaign. This is um, those then UTM parameters should directly correlate to the advertising efforts that you are then driving. So, um, and I say advertising, but it can be organic as well, but primarily from paid efforts because we know, you know, the, the number one question that we get from C-suites and boards are, how do I know it's working? But we have to work backwards from that. We have to anticipate that question coming. And that's where UTM comes into play because ultimately what allows you to do is one, it's free to add, very simple. Google has a campaign URL builder tool that if you just Google campaign URL builder, it pops right up. Um, it, it then feeds directly into Google Analytics, another free tool that uh, enables you to see the traffic and the events that are being driven by each of those individual efforts. So that way, immediately when somebody's going to say, well, how do I know it's working? You can say, this is how many people we got to the landing page from each of these tracks that we sent them down. Uh, on top of that, you can also, if you have event tracking in place, which should come through Google Tag Manager, another free tool um, is allowing you to see how many people clicked on apply now from those same efforts. UTM is uh, the bread and butter of tracking and attribution. It's one of the most effective, easiest ways to determine which effort is driving the most traffic. Um, and that really includes also all of your uh, organic efforts. QR codes, you know, this is kind of the renaissance of QR codes coming back. Um, and you can track those. You can add UTM parameters to quite literally everything you do if it then comes right back to online. Um, and that's the number one place that we start. Yeah. From there, oh, sorry. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> like from there, it gets a little bit more complex after UTM parameters and Google Analytics. Um, and that's where, you know, really the, the, the biggest opportunity that we've seen for marketers and for, for FIs in general is looking at your online application. So that has historically been a place where uh, retail teams, operations, lending teams, and marketers all have their hands off and say, well, it's not ours. And everyone is then just kind of pointing fingers as to marketing isn't driving the correct amount of leads because we're not getting any completed applications through. And marketing is trying to say, hey, but who's actually coming through the funnel? How do you know that we didn't drive those? And the conversation dies. That's also where your ROI dies. You need to know what's happening in your online applications. You need to know what's happening in your forms. And you need to be invested in the, the performance of it. Um, fortunately, despite what any of your online application providers might state, they can add things like Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics into those platforms. They often have it themselves. And no, we're not talking PII. I don't care who it was. I don't care what fields they filled out. I want to know if they made it to the end. Um, and that, again, this is where we get true conversion data. When we say conversion, there's a few different ways to measure it. But ultimately, a conversion action is that which takes a consumer the closest to becoming a customer or a member. So that can be the apply now button. It can be a contact form, it can be calling a number. It can actually be finishing an application. Lots of different ways to measure it, but ultimately I don't really care if somebody clicks on learn more. It's great, it's great information to have, you know who's engaged with, 
But when it comes to ROI, I want to know how many people truly converted. And that conversion needs to be the thing that matters most to your board and your C-suite and your retail teams and your lenders is how many completed applications are you getting for new people to come in the door. Um, and this is all back to tracking. Uh, if you couldn't tell, super passionate. That's not just coffee I had. Um, this is really how marketers can uh, earn their seat at the table is by stating and putting into place the things that are meaningful to the entire organization, not just to making sure we have more ad dollars. No, oh, that was a, that's a great rundown. Well, thank you. This definitely is not a limit to caffeine. I agree. <laughs> um, but, you know, <laughs> there is. <laughs> subjective, uh, but regardless, you, know, you said a lot there, and there's a lot to really unpack and go forth. And, you know, if I'm a marketer and I have to go up to my C-suite team, my executive team, how do I go even about starting my conversation? You know, there's, there's a lot to it. Um. I think well, one one of the from from my perspective, as far as trying to get ready to go out and do a, do something like what Mel's talking about, the first thing you do have to you have to get sign off out many times. Not every time, but uh, when when you go in front of uh, your your you know whether it's the SVP or if it's the uh, CEO or whomever, whomever it might be, it's important to start talking about not just what you can get, but I like to work almost backwards because all too often we'll have clients who will look for an estimate for a project we're doing. And uh, we will be more than happy to do that. However, sometimes when they get the estimate and they go in front of it, it's going to cost, I'm using a round number, $50,000 for this campaign. It includes uh, project management. It includes creative uh, e execution. It includes all, doing all of the ads. Uh, the landing page and all of the media research and uh, and uh, media placement, uh, all, all of those things, fifty thousand dollars, and they're going. I'll never get that. Oh my God, I'll never get that approved. And um, and the way I like to talk about it is, you know, uh, and and sometimes they'll go to get it approved, and it'll just get squashed at, at the next level. And uh, what I like to do is talk talk to our clients wherever possible. As Mel was talking about, we want it to be measurable. We want to de derive an ROI from it. So I will take that fifty thousand dollars and work backwards into a break even analysis to try to find out, get information from the bank. Uh, I don't know if this is a good time to talk about this one. We're talking about it anyways, Mel. I may as well get into it. What do you think? Uh, Go for it. <laughs> but you know, we had a client who um, wanted to do a commercial real estate campaign. And uh, when I gave them the price, again, we'll call it 50,000. It was just a hair over 50, actually. And, and I'm talking to the bank president on this one because they're a smaller bank and uh, we work as their marketing partner. And he's saying, Jim, I can't get that. That's, that's too much money. I can't do that. I can't do that. And I said, all right, well, can you just give me, do me a favor to humor me for a bit? Can you get me some information about your CRE loans? Can you tell me what the average size of your commercial real estate loan is. Can you tell me what you're earning from a net interest margin currently? Uh, and can you tell me the average life of the loan? How long do you usually have a CRE loan on, on in your portfolio? He said, yeah, I'll get you that, Jim. Why? What do you want it for? And I said, well, I'm going to try to show you how, how many loans you need to open in order to pay for this $50,000 campaign. And so he got it to me. I did all the math, backed into some numbers, and lo and behold, I did actually three different loan sizes. I went to the smallest loan size, which was about $150,000 smaller than the middle loan size, uh, which was their actual target loan size. Uh, but uh, so I went lower to be conservative and I showed them through the life of the loan with their, uh, at, at the time, their net interest margin, which was a little earlier this year. Uh, I showed them that they could actually open one loan if it lasted in their portfolio for seven years, they would not only break even, but at that point make probably about a, um, a 20, 25 to 30% ROI on that one loan. And if they open two loans, the floodgates open and it just goes uh, more, you know, just, just keeps on mounting uh, th those numbers mount uh, over and over. And they ended up um, doing the campaign, generating, at the time, uh, I believe it was three or four loans totaling about $1.3 million in 
uh, in, uh, in in balances, and I believe the numbers are, you know, it was over well over 100, maybe 200, 150 percent ROI on that 50 fifty thousand dollar investment, or in their case, it was actually fifty seven thousand, uh, with a, a number of different initiatives in there, mostly on the digital side. So I want to go break even sell you the campaign. I'm not trying to sell it. I'm trying to, you know, I'm, I'm saying sell in a non, like I want your business. I'm selling it to my boss to see if he'll just allow me to spend that money uh, part of my budget in order to show a return to the bank. So that next time I ask you this, you'll just say, yes, that's fine. I trust you. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I mean, building trust one vital and then two, leveraging that physical evidence to say, hey, you know, from the top down, you can look backwards, here's what you're going to get out of it. It's not just about, you know, we want your marketing dollars, it's what can we provide for you to then in turn have value uh, down the road. So thank you for that little tidbit, Jim. But Mel, I'm curious, do you have any uh, success stories? I do. And uh, this is a little bit different than the, the break even. Um, and it's something that I think is a little bit simpler, um, or at least easier to accomplish on an everyday basis. It's also something that you should have, you should work with all of your department heads to establish. And those are benchmarks. So on a monthly basis, on a seasonal basis, if no marketing is happening, um, or if your, you know, standard marketing is happening, um, how many applications are received? You know, what is the general business looking like across each of those business lines at any given point in time? That way you kind of have uh, an out rest. You know, this is, this is truly your benchmark if nothing's going on. Uh, that's the easiest way for us to then determine if marketing is moving the needle. Because let's face it, sometimes marketing doesn't move the needle. That's part of testing. That's part of making sure that it's actually an effective uh, means to go about generating new business. Um, this is our favorite for print. Uh, and we have an uncased study, case study that we will be uh, releasing here soon um, about that exactly. But really, uh, benchmarks should be um, used at all points in time to help really make the case as to what you're doing. So, um, you know, we had a, have a client who is in a large metro area. They did this for uh, mortgages where they had uh, previously never, they only relied, relied on print. This was at the beginning of the pandemic where everybody was having a flood of applications for mortgages. You know, everyone was buying homes, rates were down. It was great, except that this lender wasn't seeing it. They weren't getting any of that activity. They didn't know what was going on. Uh, typically received about 20 mortgage applications a month. So for, you know, a two and a half month period, or sorry, you know, I can't do basic math right now, three and a half month period, uh, was 70 applications were received. And we had been trying, saying like, please let us do some digital. Please just let us, let us get this. Um, and I mean, with Jim's help with all of his formulas, um, we were able to, to get that, to, to, prove, you know, really what the value of this is. And again, major metro areas, right, right outside of New York City and Queens. Um, and so we worked backwards from there is knowing, okay, 70 is your benchmark. That's fine. We're going to run for three and a half months. Um, and the applications received during this campaign, which was again, a multi-channel, uh, you know, multi-layered of the funnel approach, meaning there was display, there was SEM, there's remarketing, there's some social. And it's really to make sure that we are hitting people for awareness, for consideration, and for conversion. Um, some of those tried and true marketing approaches really do matter. You need to find the, the tactics that align with each. But during the campaign, because we knew that 70, you know, we had that goal in mind, um, we weren't able to do a cross domain uh, attribution in the sense of placing a tracking code within their online application. However, we could get more manual. And that was them sending us a crystal report once a month, uh, stripping out all customer information. And we would then pull a date and time stamp report out of Google Analytics. Their board then set um, a hour time frame of one, two, and three hours from which an event happened. So to break that down simply, saying, okay, if a click on apply now happened at 10 a.m. as a result of the campaign, and then if any application was received at 11, 12, or 1 p.m., that we could reasonably state that that was likely due to the, to the uh, campaign. So at the end of the campaign, which again, mid-August to end of November, that was, uh, there was 224 applications received um, and 39% of those were reasonably attributed to the campaign. 
using those numbers, we were able to say, okay, all applications, um, the total loan amount from the from those applications received was 42.8 million. Um, the average loan size for their CRA was uh, 490,000. Um, estimated origination income. And obviously there's some things that we take into account here because we don't sit at their ALCO meetings. And we were, again, trying to do this for them to state this is the approach to marketing that we believe is most effective. Um, and so their origination income, we had the 342,000. Out of that, the total marketing cost was 38,000. So, you know, of that, the total ROI at 794%. It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice for somebody that had only run print and didn't see the value in digital. But this is the approach to take as we try to, whenever somebody gives us an inch, in order to be able to go that next mile, we need to say that we're willing to do the work to show and convince the rest of the bank, the rest of the FI, why this is valuable and how it can be valuable. Um, this client has since run the campaign again. So, um, and, and these are just two. You know, we have simpler examples where you know, a client is only running a $3,000, very a $3,000 a month simple campaign and due to tracking, able to determine that 26 loans came in as a result of just that campaign effort in one month. So there's not, you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to implement tracking and to determine the ROI. It's really about understanding um, what success looks like and how you can measure it with the tools that you have at hand. Yeah, no, absolutely. And there are a plethora of success stories. Uh, we have also a ton of case studies. So any one of the audience uh, is interested, please feel free to drop a little note in the chat. we are more than happy to share one or, or all of them. Um, okay, so I mean, a lot was said with you both. Thank you so much. Uh, my last question here, uh, you know, so much has happened, but what are the next steps? I'm a little bit overwhelmed, but what can we do moving forward? That's all sounds awesome. Uh, we like to break it down really, really simply because um, I don't know if anybody gets excited like I do, but um, often I try to boil the ocean and I want to do it all at once. Uh, so we always recommend starting simply. Um, number one thing, define the business goal. We don't do things in marketing just because it's fun. I mean, sometimes, but we also do things to make sure that the business is successful. So what is one business goal that you need to accomplish, that you need to help accomplish? Is that lending? Is that mortgage? Is that commercial? Is it checking? CDs? What is it? Define what it is and define what ideally what the increase is trying to be. Um, review your institutional performance history and establish a benchmark. Become besties with your other department heads and figure out exactly what each uh, you know, kind of standard month looks like. How much are they down? How much are they up? What are their goals? What do they need to accomplish? Uh, be mindful of your internal spend appetite. Everybody wants to be on streaming TV and they want to do all the latest and greatest things, um, which is super fun, but there's a lot of cost associated with all of it. So unless your institution is all in on marketing, they know exactly what they want to do and they're fine to just approve it all. Several institutions like that. Um, unless you're that, really focus on high converting channels. That's Google FEM, that's even Google Display, that's Google Performance Max. It's campaigns that have proven to reach an audience that is ready to take that, uh, that key action to become a customer or a member. And then finally, determine your attribution strategy. Is that a break-even analysis? Is that just purely benchmarking? Is that a more fuller tracking system such as getting into your online application system and looking at UTM parameters all the way through? Or is it running crystal reports and Google Analytics reporting and matching it up? But figure out what that success looks like and how you can make sure that you are getting the credit for where marketing credit is due. Um, but those are my like, four key takeaways. Oh, final, fifth key takeaway. What is the value of that account? One CD, what, does that, what is the value of that? One, one mortgage loan, one commercial loan, what is the value of that? Take the most conservative number possible, and that'll give you that true ROI number. Yeah. yeah. If I could just add a, one or two, one item at least, is that and it kind of falls back, falls right into uh, where... Mel was talking, not, not with the value of each account, but right before that. And that is to be your biggest proponent, be your own proponent. Um, all too often, uh, marketing gets eight, as I said earlier, taken for granted oftentimes, uh, looked at as just a necessary uh, part of the business, but doesn't always contribute a lot. 
And I think one of the ways to start getting all of your successes out there is for you to be a, be a proponent. Mel was talking about be besties with a lot of people within the organization. Talk to them about it. You know, what? we just ran a, 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 a campaign on uh, checking accounts and we knocked it dead. We did X, Y, Z number or whatever it might be over the, over, uh, uh, we, we, we did 50% more than we did the prior year. And uh, I want to thank you. And if you're talking to somebody who's running the branches, thank them for their, their, uh, their assistance through that whole process. And it's just keep people uh, in the know about marketing. Keep marketing top of mind in your organization. Uh, and that will really assist you with getting the credibility and that trust that you really need, uh, deserve, uh, actually. Yeah, you said it perfectly. Uh, communication, credibility, trust. Definitely the big, big three there. But uh, that's all I have. Uh, thank you so much to you both for joining me today. Uh, Talk about some attribution ROI. Um, if you, anyone listening would like to reach out, uh, my email is j j u l i o at campus marketing. And we all follow that same first letter, last name, um, email at the agency. Um, so thank you again, you, Jim, and Bell. And I hope everyone listening has a great day. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thanks very much. I really appreciate your time.